Hello everybody and welcome back to our video series on financial accounting Part 140. Today I want to go over chapter number 7 internal control and cash. As you know cash is the lifeblood of any company and it must be managed carefully and safeguarded. Even companies that are successful in every other way can go bankrupt if they fail to manage their cash. Today, in this chapter, uh, we explain the essential features of internal control system and describe how this uh, uh, system applies to cash receipts and cash payment. Bank reconciliation and related journal entries also will be, uh, will be discussed. And then I want to explain how uh, cash is reported in the financial statement and describe way to manage and monitor cash. Learning objectives. At the end of today's session, you will be able to 1. Explain the components of internal control system, including its control activities and limitations. 2. Apply key control activities to cash receipts and cash payments. 3. Prepare bank reconciliation and related journal entries. 4. Explain the reporting and management of cash. Learning objective number one, explain the components of internal control system, including its control activities and limitations. Internal control. Internal control consists of the systems within the company that help achieve reliable financial reporting, operate effectively and efficiently, and comply with relevant laws and regulations. Internal controls can be preventive or detective. Preventive, which stops something management doesn't want to happen from occurring. Detective, which indicate when something that management didn't want to happen has occurred. So the internal control help prevent and detect errors, which cause unintentional misstatements. Also, it is an effective way to prevent and detect fraud. Good internal control systems has the following five primary components. One, control environment. Two, risk assessment. Three, control activities. Four, information and communication. And five, monitoring activities. One, control environment. Management must make it clear that the organization values integrity and that unethical activity will not be tolerated. When the actions of the company's management demonstrate a commitment to integrity and ethical behavior, it is often called setting the tone at the top. Such control environment is critical for internal controls to be effective. 2. Risk assessment Management must identify and analyze the various factors that create risk for the business and determine how to best mitigate this risk, how to reduce the likelihood of certain actions happening and reduce the impact they will have if they do happen. 3. Control activities. To reduce the occurrence of unintentional or intentional errors, Management must design policies and procedures to address the specific risk faced by the company. For information and communication, the internal control system must capture and communicate all pertinent information to the appropriate internal and external users. 5. Monitoring activities. Internal control systems must be monitored periodically for their adequacy. To be effective, significant deficiencies must be communicated to management so they cannot be addressed. Control activities. Each of the five components of the internal control system is important. Here we will focus on one component, the control activities. The reason why is that these activities form the backbone of the company efforts to address the risk it faces. The specific control activities that are used by a company will vary depending on management's assessment of this risk. This assessment is also heavily influenced by the size and nature of the company. 
we will review five control activities that apply to most companies. One, assessment of responsibility. Two, segregation of duties. Three, documentation. Four, physical controls. And five, review and reconciliations. These control activities are explained in the following sections. Assignment of responsibility. Responsibilities in the business may be assigned by employee level. For example, only managers may be authorized to perform certain tasks such as approving discounts or authorizing refunds. This control activity is most effective when only one employee or level of employee is authorized to perform a specific task and requires management to determine the activities that each employee or manager maybe is responsible for. This internal control enables responsibility to be assigned to specific employees, making them accountable for carrying a task out appropriately. Segregation of duties. Segregation of duties is essential in system of internal control. No one employee should be responsible for authorizing transactions, recording them, and having custody of the related assets. The responsibility for these activities should be segregated, that is, assigned to different individuals. When the same individual is responsible for authorization, recording, and asset custody, the potential for fraud increases. Fraud related to intentional action of misappropriate or steal assets or misstate financial information. Example. When applying the segregation of duties to the purchasing activities, management would want to ensure that different employees were responsible for ordering goods, approving the order, receiving the goods, and authorizing payment for the goods. Consider what could happen if all purchasing activities were carried out by one individual. That person could receive a bribe to buy merchandise at inflated price from this honest supplier. The employee could record the transaction and approve payment without ever being discovered. Alternatively, the employee could also prepare fictitious invoices from a company that established, record them, approve them for payment, and when paid, receive the payment and deposit the money in bank accounts they control. If the employee had access to the merchandise, they could approve the purchase of merchandise and then steal it. When the responsibilities are for approving orders and payments, receiving and recording are assigned to different individuals, the opportunity for any one individual to commit such abuses is much lower. Segregation of duties also reduces the risk of unintentional errors because more than one person is involved in the process. Documentation. Documents provide evidence that transactions and events have occurred at specified times and at specified amounts. For example, companies use shipping documents to indicate that goods have been shipped to customers and sales invoices to indicate that customers have been billed for the goods. If a signature or initials is added to a document, it's also become possible to identify the individual responsible for the transaction or event, which links to control activities, documentation and assignment of responsibility. Documentation such as invoices and checks should be sequentially pre-numbered. The pre-numbering can be done either electronically or manually. Pre-numbering helps prevent a transaction from being recorded more than once or conversely from not being recorded at all. Physical control. Physical controls can be used to safeguard assets and enhance the accuracy and reliability of accounting records. Physical controls include controls shown in this illustration. In addition to the physical controls shown in here, companies should ensure that assets are adequately insured 
Ensuring assets is another form of safeguarding them, in this case, from risk related to theft or damage from fire or floods. Review and reconciliation. The four control activities that were just discussed, assignment of responsibility, segregation of duties, documentation, and physical controls should be subject to review. This is most effective when the review is performed by someone who is not involved in the control activity being reviewed. This is independent review and can be conducted by another employee, internal review, or by someone else outside the company or called external review. On the other hand, reconciliations are a key part of this control activity and involve comparisons between two or more documents, like comparing the receiving report with the sales invoices. Later in this chapter, we will learn about bank reconciliation, which are a key internal control related to cash. Discussion question number one. What are some examples of control activities a movie theater might have? Think about it. Answer may vary. Examples include segregation of duties, like ensuring the person placing the popcorn order from the supplier doesn't recall this transaction or approve its payment. Another example includes physical control, like locking the movie theater after hours and using an alarm system. Limitations of internal control. No matter how well it is designed or operated, a company system of internal control can only provide reasonable assurance rather than a guarantee that assets are properly safeguarded and that the accounting records are accurate and reliable. This is due to a number of limitations, which include 1. Cost-benefit considerations 2. Human error 3. Collusion and 4. Management override Cost-benefit considerations mean that the cost of establishing control activities should not exceed the benefits that are expected to result from their use. In other words, if the benefits, such as reduced asset debt, that result from implementing an internal control are less than the cost of doing so, management would not implement the control. The impact of human error is an important factor that limits the effectiveness of every system of internal control. A well-designed system can become ineffective as a result of lack of training, employees' fatigue, carelessness, or indifference. For example, if a receiving clerk was not well-trained or did not understand the importance of doing so, they may not bother to count goods received, resulting in the wrong amount of inventory being added to the records. Occasionally, two or more individuals may work together to get around prescribed control activities, which is known as collusion. Such collusion can significantly lessen the effectiveness of internal control because it eliminates the protection expected from segregation of employees' duties. If supervisor and cashier collaborate together to understate cash receipts and steal the shortfall. The system of internal control may be defeated. The act of collusion is another example of fraud and one that no system of internal control can be designed to eliminate. Management override. Because management is responsible for a company internal controls, it's also possible for management to override them. Managers may be able to ignore internal control policies and the procedures without detection, if they also provide the oversight function related to them. Management may override controls for personal gain or to improve the financial result of the company. These are both examples of fraud. Fraud. Fraud involves intentional actions taken to misappropriate or steal assets or misstate financial information. It is the intentional or deliberate nature of actions that distinguishes fraud 
from errors. Examples of misstatements are recording expenses as assets, overstating useful lives of assets, or recording revenues that do not exist. Fraud is most likely to occur when the three main factors shown in this illustration are present. Opportunity, pressure, and rationalization. The most important element of the fraud triangle is opportunity. For employee to commit a fraud, the workplace environment must provide opportunities that employee can take advantage of. For example, inadequate monitoring of employee actions can create opportunities for theft and can embolden employees because they believe they will not be caught. A second factor that contributes to fraud is pressure. Employees sometimes come into fraud because personal financial problems caused by too much debt. Or they might come into fraud because they want to lead a lifestyle that cannot afford on their current salary. The third factor that contributes to fraud is rationalization. In order to justify their fraud, employees rationalize or make excuses for their dishonest actions. For example, employees sometimes justify fraud or stealing because they believe they are underpaid while the employer is making a lot of money. Learning objective number two. Apply key control activities to cash receipts and cash balance. Cash controls. Cash is something that everyone desires, which makes it highly susceptible to theft. In addition, because companies can have large volumes of cash transactions, errors may easily occur in recording these transactions. To safeguard cash, protect them from theft, and to ensure the accuracy of the accounting record, effective control activities are essential. What is cash? From an accounting perspective, cash generally consists of coins, currency, paper money, checks, and money orders. Cash may be held directly by the company or be on deposit accounts with the financial institutions. The general rule is that if the bank will accept it for deposit, it is cash. Cash can either be on hand in the company's cash register, SIB, or other secure place, or on deposit in a bank or similar financial institution. Control activities over cash receipts. Cash receipts can take various forms. One, over the counter receipts. 2. Electronic receipts 3. Check receipts Checks received either at the time of sale or at a later date by email. The internal control procedures relating to cash receipts will vary from one company to another depending on the nature of their businesses. To illustrate some of these control activities, you will cover controls used typical service or merchandise businesses. Over the counter receipt. Some businesses receive payment with cash, credit card, or debit cards, like retail businesses. Generally, the internal control over cash receipts is more effective when cash receipts are deposited intact into the bank account on a daily basis. An authorized employee, such as the head cashier or general manager, should make bank deposit. Increasing the amount of cash received by electronic fund transfer that will be discussed later in this section is also an effective control. Electronic receipts. Electronic fund transfer, EFT, is a way of transferring money electronically from one bank account to another. Debit card and bank credit card transactions are examples of electronic fund transfers. Another example is when customers use online banking to pay their accounts. When a customer pays his or her account, the cash is in instantly transferred from the customer's bank account to the company bank account. EFT is a more common way for customers to pay their account in service businesses, which does not generally use VOS software 
for over-the-counter receipts. Electronic fund transfers normally result in better internal control because company employees are not required to handle cash or checks, which will be discussed in the next section. This doesn't mean that recording errors or the opportunities for fraud are eliminated. For example, without proper assignment of responsibility and segregation of duties, an employee might be able to redirect electronic collections into bank account that they control and conceal the theft with fraudulent accounting entries. Check receipts. When a check is received at the time of the sale, it will be included in the cash register and form part of the employee's reconciliation of daily sales to cash on hand. When a check is received in the mail, it is usually accompanied by remittance advice, which detectable part of the invoice that customers are asked to send back with their check. Mail room clerk will send the remittance advice to accountants responsible for recording cash receipts and send the checks to another employee who will deposit them at the bank. This is called segregation of duties. The employee making the bank deposit should have no drug or keeping duties so that they are prevented from stealing the cash and covering up the theft by understating the value of cash received journal entries. A person making the bank deposit will receive a bank stamp deposit slip. Each day, an dependent employee can then compare the amount of cash deposited per the deposit slip with the amount of cash receipts recorded that day to ensure that funds deposited were also recorded. If the duties are segregated this way, no one employee would be able to steal checks and also be able to record their receipts to cover up the theft. The review and reconciliation of deposit slips further strengthen the controls over check receipts. Here in this illustration, we can see the control activities of our cash receipts. The control activities in here, assignment of responsibility, segregation of duties, documentation, physical controls, review and reconciliation. Assignment of responsibility for cash receipts, authorize only designated personnel to handle cash receipts. Segregation of duties, have different individuals recording cash receipts and handling cash. Documentation, use remittance advice, cash research tapes, UIS system reports, and deposit slips or confirmations. Physical control, store cash in saves with limited access, use cash register and deposit all cash in bank daily. Review and reconciliation, have supervisors count cash receipts daily, have an accountant compare total receipts with a bank deposit daily. Control activities over cash payments. Cash is distributed for a variety of reasons, such as big expenses to settle liabilities or purchase assets. Generally, control activities over cash payments are more effective when payments are made by check or by electronic fund transfer rather than in cash. Other control procedures, such as BT cash funds, which are not discussed here, are put in place for few payments that cannot be made by check. Here in this slide, you can find some examples of control activities over cash payments. Assignment of responsibility. Authorize only designated personnel to sign checks or approve electronic payments. Segregation of duties, have different individuals approve and record payments. Ensure the individual signing and approving the check is not also recording the payment. Documentation, use pre number checks and account for them in sequence. Ensure each check has approved invoice. Physical controls, store cash in sales with limited access, restrict access to blank checks, digital signature software, 
and check signing machines, use electronic payments when possible. Review and reconciliation, compare checks with invoices, reconcile the bank statement monthly. Learning objective number three, prepare bank reconciliation and related journal entries. Bank accounts, a key control activity. Several of the control activities discussed in the previous section involve the use of bank account, depositing cash on a regular basis, comparing cash receipts with bank deposit totals, and preparing monthly bank reconciliations. In other words, the use of a bank contributes significantly to good internal control over cash. Aside from safeguarding cash, the use of a bank minimizes the amount of cash that must be kept on hand. In addition, control is strengthened because the bank's record, that's called sometimes bank statements, provide a second record of cash transactions that fall into and out of the bank account. This enables the company to reconcile the transaction recorded in its cash account with those recorded in the bank's records, I mean bank statement. Bank statements. Each month, the bank provides a bank statement showing the company's bank transactions and balance. With online banking, companies can access their bank statements whenever they are required. For example, in the illustration in this slide, the bank statement for a related company shows the following. 1. The date. 2. The description of each transaction. 3. The amounts deducted or debited from the bank account, for example, checks, EFT payments, service fee, and other payments. 4. The amounts added, I mean credited, to the bank account, for example, deposits, EFT receipts, and other receipts. And 5. The account balance after each transaction. Understanding debits and credit. While cash is an asset account for the company, to the bank, the funds it holds for the company are availability because the company can request them at any time. The abilities are increased by credits and decreased by debits. When a company deposits money into its bank account, the bank's liability to the company increases. When a company writes check or makes electronic payment, the banks pay out this amount and decreases or debits it is liability to the company. Differences between company records and bank statement. Given that the bank and the company keep independent records of the company's checking account, you might assume that the balances in both sets of records will always agree. In fact, the two balances are seldom the same because many transactions are not recorded at the same time on both records. It is therefore necessary to reconcile the company's cash account balance and the balance recorded or reported on the bank statement and account for any differences as necessary. There are two reasons that the bank and company records differ. One, timing differences that result in one of the parties recording the transaction before the other is aware of it. Two errors made by either party in recording transactions. Examples of the timing differences are 1. The period after a check is written and dated but not yet presented to or paid by the bank. This is called outstanding checks. 2. The period between receipts being recorded by the company and receipts being recorded by the bank, like something called deposit in transit that will be discussed in depth later. Reconciling the bank account. In reconciling the bank account, the balance bill the bank statement is reconciled with the balance bill the company's books. Reconciling items must be taken into account to arrive at the reconciled cash balance. The reconciliation is usually divided into two sections, one relating to the bank statement balance and one relating to the book balance. Because bank reconciliations are normally prepared at the end of every month, the starting point for preparing the, the bank reconciliation is to enter 
the ending balance for the cash bear, bear bank found on the bank statement and the cash balance bear book found in the cash account in the general ledger on the reconciliation. Once the opening balances from the bank statement for the bank and the cash account in general ledger for the company are determined, the next step is to identify the reconciling items and determine how each reconciling item affects the bank's or the company's opening balances respectively to arrive at the reconciled cash balance. Bank Reconciliation Procedures The bank reconciliation statement includes two parts, left-hand side and right-hand side. On the left-hand side, usually we will insert the cash balance per bank statement and then we have to adjust this balance to arrive at reconciled cash balance. This would include adjustment to the bank balance, like we have to add deposit in transit. I mean the deposit sent to the bank, either checks or electronically, but not arrive for some reason to the bank. And then we have to deduct any outstanding checks issued by the company, but not yet cashed. And as well as we have to adjust it for any errors then the, the balance will be called reconciled cash balance. On the other hand, we have to adjust the cash balance per the company box that will be shown on the right side of the bank statement. So we have to start with this balance, then adjustment will be after. So the adjustment will be something like that. AFT, I mean electronic fund transfer collections recorded by the bank, but not yet by the company. Interest and other deposit recorded by the bank, but not yet by the company. And then we have to deduct the transactions also recorded by the bank, but not yet by the company, like EFT payments, service charge, non-sufficient fund checks, and so on. And after all, we have to adjust the balance with any errors, arriving at reconciled cash balance that should be equal to reconciled cash balance in the other side. Deposit in transit. Compare the individual deposits on the bank statement with A, the deposit in transit from the preceding bank reconciliation, and B, the deposit recorded in the books. Deposit in transit were recorded in the company's books when they were made but have not yet been recorded by the bank because it doesn't know about them yet. Once they are preceded by the bank, the company's account balance will be increased. Therefore, they must be added to the balance per bank in the reconciliation process. Outstanding checks. Compare the pay checks shown on the bank statement or retained with the bank statement with a checks outstanding from the preceding bank reconciliation and the checks issued by the company. Outstanding checks were recorded on the company's books when they were prepared, but have not yet been cleared the bank account because they have not been deposited by the recipient of the check, are still in the mail, or are still being processed by either the issuer or recipient bank. When the issuer's bank becomes aware of these checks, the company's account balance will be decreased. Therefore, these checks must be deducted from the balance per bank in the reconciliation process. Bank errors. Note any errors made by the bank that have been discovered in the previous steps. For example, if the bank processed a deposit of, let's say, 1,693 as 1,639 in error, the difference of 54 is added to the balance bear bank on the bank reconciliation because the bank will increase the amount or the account balance when it becomes aware of the error. EFT collections, interest earned, and other deposits. Compare the deposit on the bank statement with the company records. Any unrecorded amounts should be added to the balance bearer books. EFT payments, service charge, and non-sufficient fund or MSF checks. Any unrecorded payments should be deducted from the balance bearer book. 
book errors, note any errors made by the company that have been discovered in the previous steps. For example, the company wrote check number uh, 439 to, to supplier in the amount of 3260 on April 7. But the account clerk recorded the check amount as 3620 instead. The error of the difference, I mean 360, is added to the balance bearer books because the company reduced the cash account balance bear by $360 more than it should be or should have when it recorded the check as $3,620 instead of $3,260. Bank Reconciliation Journal Entries Each reconciling item in determining the adjusted balance bear the books only must be journalized and posted as we can see later in this lecture. However, all transactions or all uh, reconciling items in the bank side cannot be journalized because the bank should you know, deal with them, not the company. Example of bank reconciliation. The bank statement for Laird Company was shown in this slide. It shows that an adjusted balance bear bank of $14,606.73 on April 30, 2021. On this date, the cash balance bear books is 4,387.55 cent. From the steps described before, the following reconciling items for the bank can be determined. One, deposit in transit should be added. After comparing the deposit recorded in the books with the deposit listed in the bank statement, it was determined that the April 30 deposit of $2,200.40 was not recorded by the bank until May 3rd. So we have to add this amount to the bank statement balance. Two, outstanding checks should be deducted. After comparing the checks recorded in the books with the checks listed in the bank statement, it was determined that three checks were outstanding number 437 of $3,000, number 438 of $1,401.30, and number 440 of an amount of $1,502.70. So those amounts in total should be deducted. And then we have, we don't have any bank errors, then when I arrive to the uh, adjusted balance, that is in this uh, example $10,904.13. Reconciling items per books are as follows. One, EFT receipts should be added. Unrecorded electronic receipts from customers on accounts on April 3rd and 16 determined from the bank statement in total of $6,787. 18 cent. Two, interest. We don't have any interest to be added. Interest revenue. Three, EFT payments should be deducted. Also, we don't have any EFT payments not recorded yet, so we have to ignore it as well. Four, non sufficient fund checks should be deducted. Returned checks from the cost or from the bank plus non sufficient fund fee on April 21st in total 4000 uh, or $465.60. Five, service charge should be deducted. Fees related to debt and credit cards together with bank service charge on the company's accounts in total of $165 should be deducted. And finally, uh, company's errors. Check number 439 was correctly written by alert company for $3,260 and was correctly paid by the bank on April 7. However, it was recorded as 3,620 on their books. The account is too low, so the error must be added back, and the difference is $360. Uh, and then the balance per uh, uh, book would be $10,904.13, and is the same as the one shown in the bank side. 
bank reconciliation journal entries. The bank reconciliation shown before is only the first step in the reconciliation process. The reconciliation is not complete until the company's books are adjusted to agree with the adjusted or correct cash balance. The company must record each reconciling items related to the cash balance per books. If these items are not journalized and both, the cash account will not show the correct balance. So in the next step, we have to record all reconciling items shown in the uh, books uh, side. Electronic receipts on account. A payment of an account by a customer is recorded in the same way, whether the cash is received through the mail or electronically. The entry is on April 30, cash debit and accounts receivable credit for the amount mentioned in the uh, bank reconciliation statement. Bank error. Examination of the general journal shows that the incorrectly recorded check number 439 was payment on account to supplier. The correcting entry is on April 30, cash debit and accounts payable credit for the difference that is $360. Non-sufficient or NSF check. As indicated earlier, a check returned for non-sufficient funds or non-NSF along with the related service charge becomes an account receivable to the depositor. The entry is debit accounts receivable and credit cash for the amount of $465.60. Bank charges expense. Fees for processing debit and credit card transactions are normally debited to the expense account that's called bank charge. And the journal entry will be like that. On April 30, bank charges expense debit and credit cash for the amount of $165. And this is the cash account after recording and posting all adjusting entry related to the reconciliation process. Discussion question number two. Why is a bank reconciliation an important part of a company internal control over cash? The solution could be something like that. Many of the control activities around cash involve the use of bank depositing cash on a regular basis, comparing cash receipts with bank deposit totals, and preparing monthly bank reconciliations. A company can control its cash by using bank safeguard its cash, checks received and written, and electronic funds received and date. In addition, control is strengthened because second record is maintained of all bank transactions, which can then be compared with the company's record. A bank reconciliation take these bank's records and convert them to the company's cash accounts records then identifies or verifies the appropriate reason for any discrepancies. Learning objective number four, explain the reporting and management of cash. Reporting cash. Cash is reported in two different financial statements. The statement of financial position and the statement of cash flows. The statement of financial position reports the amount of cash available at a specific point in time. The statement of cash flows shows the receipts and payments of cash during a period of time. These two statements are linked because the ending cash amount reported on the statement of cash flows agrees with the cash account reported on the statement of financial position. We introduced the statement of cash flows in chapter number one, and we will discuss it in more details in chapter number 13. Because the cash is the most liquid asset, cash is listed first in the current asset section of the statement of financial position. Although the reverse order of liquidity can also be used under IFRS or international financial reporting standards. Many companies combine cash with cash equivalents. Cash equivalents are short-term, highly liquid, is dissolved investment that are held to meet short-term cash needs 
rather than for investment purposes. These investments must be ones that the company can easily turn into a uh, known amount of cash and for which there is an investment or a sufficient risk of uh, changes in value. Bank overdrafts are deducted from cash equivalents if the overdraft results from using an operating line of credit or credit facilities that is repayable on demand or it is integral part of the company cash management practices. We will assume this is the case in this chapter and any related end of chapter materials. In summary, cash equivalents inc include liquid asset less bank overdraft if any as shown in this slide. Managing cash. Many companies struggle not because they cannot generate sales but because they cannot manage their cash. As shown in this slide, the following basic principles of cash management help ensure that companies will have sufficient amount of cash. 1. Increase the speeds of collection on receivable. 2. Keep inventory levels low. 3. Take advantage of credit periods. 4. Plan the timing of major expenditures. 5. Invest idle cash. And 6. Prepare cash budget. Discussion question number three. Do you use a cash budget? How does can a cash budget help you manage your cash? Think about it. Solution could be something like that. A cash budget shows the anticipated cash flows over a one or two year period. It can identify when additional financing will be necessary well before the actual need arises. It can also indicate when excess cash will be available for the repayment of debts or investments or for other purposes. This is the end of chapter number seven, internal control and cash. In the next class, we'll discuss chapter number eight from the same textbook, reporting and analyzing receivable. Thank you very much for attending my class. Bye bye. Multiple choice questions for practice. Chapter number seven, bank reconciliation statement. So let's get started with the first question. Question number one. When preparing the bank reconciliation, which item shows on the bank side? A, bank service charge, NSF check, outstanding checks, or the electronic funded transfer. So I think about it. So as you can see guys, the one that should be shown in the bank side is C, I mean uh, outstanding checks. So outstanding checks are checks that have been recorded on the company books, but not yet cleared by the bank. So already recorded by the company, but not yet by the bank, so should be recorded in the bank side. Question number two. Which of the following is added to the bank side? So I mean bank side also was the, but will be added. Service charge, deposit in transit, bank collections, or NSF? For sure will be B. So B, why? Because uh, the deposit in transit already recorded by the company said we recorded we deposited we sent it to the bank but not yet received by the bank so should be recorded in the bank side and will be added question number three a check written to pay liability cleared the bank for 34 dollars but was recorded in the journal as 43. this item would be included in the bank reconciliation as a addition on the bank side, addition on the book side, deduction on the bank side, deduction on the book side. The answer is B. The company credited cash for $43 when the check was recorded. Since the check actually cleared the bank for $34, the company took too much out of the cash balance. This amount needs to be 
added back. So the rule in the uh, correction of the errors would be to de determine which side bank or the company committed the error. So deciding which, uh, which side committed the error would be the first step. If we say the error committed by the company, that means the correction would be recorded in the company side. Vice versa, if the bank committed the mistake or the error, so the correction will be in the bank side as well. So depending on the case. Question four, which of the following items found on the bank reconciliation does not require a journal entry to adjust the cash balance? Deposit in transit, NSF check, collection by the bank, bank service charge. So the one that you know doesn't require adjustment will be the one shown into the bank side, not in the book side. So which one will be shown in the bank side? So as you can see here, guys, so the one that will be shown into the bank side is the deposit in transit only. Others will be shown in the company side, so they, they require to be recorded uh, with journal entries. So deposit in transit means that the company has already debited cash for the amount of the deposit. Question number five, the following data is available for EcoSave company for May. Book balance at May 31st, 500. Outstanding six two hundred deposit in transit four hundred service charge thirty interest earned on check ten dollar NSF check fifty. What is the adjusted book balance on May thirty first? So what kind of item that should be included into the book side? So let's get started with the first. So book side. So here let me uh, side. So this is will be included for sure. This is the beginning of the the balance that should be included. This is for, for the book, I mean ours. Outstanding six, no, we cannot include this one in the book side. The other one will be included into the bank side. Also, same thing for the outstanding will be not included. Service charge, yes, will be included. Interest in it, yes, will be added. NSF check should be deducted. So based on that, the balance will be 430, 430, I mean $500 plus interest earned, uh, $10 minus service charge 30 and NSF $50. Question number six, when preparing the journal entries relating to bank reconciliation, the entry to record NSF check received from the customer would be, you know the NSF, those are the non-sufficient funds returned back from the bank. So what we did before, as we see the check from the customer, we added to our record. We said debit cash, credit accounts receivable, then we send it to the bank as deposit. But the bank returned it back as NSF. So what we have to do, we have to reverse the already recorded entry. So what we have to do, we have to debit accounts receivable and the credit cash. Debit accounts result and the credit cash. So as you can see, the correct answer here is B. B is the correct answer. So B NSF means non-sufficient funds when a company deposit check from the customer that is returned back, marked as NSF, the amount of the check should be returned to accounts receivable, and it should be debited to accounts receivable until collected back in cash from the customer. 